what's going on good people welcome back to another episode of trading my live account today is june 27 2023 we made some trades today so let's get into it so let's start our analysis off by talking about all of the important levels that we have on the chart today so we have one level on the chart that's major and that is yesterday's closing price so that price falls at 33,977 and is represented by this greenish tealish line right here. And that uh, closing price from yesterday will play a very important factor throughout the rest of the session. And we'll actually get into that right now. So let's start with trade number one. So this was in the pre-market a little bit before the market opened about an hour earlier. So I went long during the bull spike at trade number one and I expected prices to hit yesterday's closing price. So for all of my notes that's what ycp stands for just an abbreviated version so this is trade one i went long i'm expecting prices to come back up to retest but they never quite made it there prices came back and stopped me out at break even so that's no problem let's zoom in a little bit get a better picture all right so we pulled back down a little bit had a little bit of a pullback pull back to what used to be a previous level of support we found support down there created this double bottom we had a higher low that got formed right here. And then once I saw that, I saw prices come back and actually hit my same entry price from trade number one. So I took the same trade again. And that's actually one of my one of my biggest uh, components of my strategy is that if a trade comes to break even, that's fine. You don't get in immediately after. But if it does eventually come back and spikes through that price that you, that, uh, you initially got in the first time, then I want to take that trade again. So I did a good job of doing that right there on trade two. I was able to take it right back up to just below yesterday's closing price and got my profit right there. So after that, we saw the market open at 930. We had a huge bull spike to the upside where we had one, two, three, four, four straight candles to the upside. Really, we can really call this nine. We have this little one red candle here, but one compared to nine. I think that's good enough to call it a bull spike. So on trade three, see here's what I know about bull spikes. And bull spikes are these scenarios right here where you see pretty much nothing but green candles all the way up for a significant amount of time. So I know that usually when you have moves up like that, because there really are no pullback points, prices have a strong tendency to reverse and come all the way back down and get back all of those gains that they made because once the selling starts, everybody that was long from this entire sequence right here, they'll either be looking to take their profits or take their losses. But either way, they'll be selling out. And you have a short traders coming in that's also short selling that just creates double pressure, which gives the market a higher likelihood of moving to the downside. So that was my thought going into trades three through five. But I went wrong because I was way too early trying to take these trades. Not only was I too early, I also tried to short at the lowest prices of the swing. Now that right there, that's definitely FOMO because if you're shorting at the lowest prices of the swing without confirmation, expecting for it to just break immediately, that's just not the case. You know, shorting from lower prices usually for me just isn't a recipe for success. And whenever you have an idea about what you think could happen in the market, it's very rare that you can just go in and then just jump to conclusions and take that trade you want to have the idea that you have but you also want to make sure that you give the market time to play out because what i noticed here was that the market needed to come up and make a double top see i knew that prices had a higher chance of moving to the downside because i've studied you know bull spikes like this but if we consider what the average trader is looking at they might not be thinking that far ahead or if they are, they're probably waiting for a confirmation signal. So me trying to get in right here is just jumping the gun. I needed to wait for that confirmation signal of this double bottom right here. And then I'm like, okay, now it's okay to short. Because notice on trade six, that's the trade that actually worked throughout this whole entire sequence, which was what I was trying to actually accomplish before. Right? But look at the difference between trade six and trades three, four, and five. At trade three, first of all, like we said before, no really no confirmation to say that prices are going to continue down. Also shorting from lower prices. Prices had never broken through this level of support right here. So I was definitely jumping the gun. 
But notice how after we made a double top, we broke through that level. See, that's when you can go short at lower prices. There's a time and place for every strategy in the market. And you got to make sure that you apply each strategy at the correct time. Because like we see right here, I could have the right idea, but still be wrong about the overall trade if my timing is off. So that's the main lesson that I took away from that entire sequence from trades three all the way through trade six. So we see prices come back down. We create another lower high right here at this ellipse. And I tried to catch this trade right here, but I was actually one point away. I think I have my entry at 49, 34,049. It came up to 34,048. But nonetheless, I was still able to catch it once it broke past support from this little micro zone. We can call it between here and here. So once prices broke that level of support right there, that's where I took trade seven. So on trade seven, I shorted here as prices broke through support. The trade hit my profit target, but I held on in expectation that yesterday's closing price would be hit and the trade eventually came back to break even. And that was my, my biggest problem, not only on trade seven, but also throughout the rest of the trades that I took today was that I was much, much, much too focused on trying to let prices uh, we're well, trying to hold prices all the way back down to a major level that I was keying off of, which today was yesterday's closing price down here. So usually more than likely, if prices are trending towards that level, they'll like 90, I say like maybe 95% of the time, based on my experience, prices will get there and reach that point. So you can just hold that trade and, you know, take a, a very good profit when it hits that level. But there are those certain occasions where Prices will come close. Like, look at this right here where we have 10 through 11. They came and spiked all the way back down to around 33,985. So that's seven points away. Well, what was the closing price? 77. So that's eight points away from yesterday's closing price. So that's a scenario where prices came close enough to consider that level being touched, but never really touched it in reality. But a lot of times in the market, you won't have a perfect touch of a level. Sometimes you will, but on those, on those occasions where you don't, you definitely don't want to force the issue and not take profits that you could have locked in. And that's what happened on trade seven. You know, I had an opportunity to take my 20 point uh, scalp target, but I was like, nah, I'm going to hold it out because if it can get all the way to my 20 point scalp target, that means that the closing price from yesterday is about 20 more points away. And I figure if the momentum is strong enough, that's really nothing. But that's me jumping ahead and trying to predict what the market would do rather than taking what's in front of me at that specific time. So I think that's one of the biggest takeaways I got right there from trade seven. Now on eight through nine, it says always strive to respect your break even trades. And that's extremely important and that's actually one of my biggest rules that i have in my trading strategy because my break even stop is triggered once prices move halfway towards my profit target so once they get there the stop automatically gets moved to break even now i specifically crafted that number based on my strategy so if prices ever do have make uh make my break even price get triggered and they come back and hit that break even that means that something went wrong because if prices move this far in my favor and then came back, that means I need to sit back and reanalyze. Now, remember what I said earlier about break evens. I say that if prices spike back through that price again, then you can take that trade. But if they don't, you don't just want to take that same break even trade because you frustrated that you had profit and it came back to break even. So on trades eight through nine, I was going through that also. And let's actually zoom in here because really we have trade 7.5 that's before trade 8 and that was this trade right here where see this break even trade i came back tried to take the same trade immediately got stopped out came back on the next candle and tried to do the exact same thing and it just didn't work now notice how i was also able to catch prices down here and it was also the same trade as trade 7 so not too far away in terms of entry prices and i had the same opportunity to get those 20 points but i still was kind of stubborn i realized that we could move away from the closing price and not touch it but i still wanted to hold it just in case we did and i think that's just a bad decision right there because 
and the market you want to take what's in front of you you don't want to jump too far ahead unless you see clear signs that indicate that it's okay to jump that far ahead but today just wasn't the day to do that and it's one of the biggest things i learned you know don't try and chase that closing price or whatever major level you're aiming for don't try and just key in on that level and look at that as the end all be all always analyze the context of the market that you're trading in and look at the information that the market is presenting to you and make a, a proper decision about whether or not you should take profits then or if you should hold your trade for a bigger profit target so just a a, a little lesson right there that i learned from those trades so then let's move on to 10 and 11. so i think i talked about this a little bit i had another chance to take the same trade as trade seven i think that's what i was talking about right here and i also held out for yesterday's closing price and didn't take the profits when they were there so that's what i was just talking about right then so then let's move on to trades 12 and 13. let's zoom in a little bit so i shorted here and i saw large profits that could have been taken but sometimes prices can reverse before they hit a major level and it's not just necessarily okay to hold it out and try and get that level if the market is not offering you that at that time so let's actually look at trades 12 and 13 so at trade 12 i shorted almost from the exact same price as trade 7 and on this occasion i had a chance to at least take prices back down catch a smooth little 15 points at the bottom of the consolidation zone now when prices came back up to retest the top of this consolidation zone i shorted once more because whenever i encounter a consolidation zone in the market the first thing i want to do is i want to gauge which direction the prices were moving before the zone was established we were in a pretty good downtrend so that means that once i identify that we're in a downtrend i only want to trade the consolidation zone from the top of it and then either take it back down to the bottom or just hold the trade if it's going to a major level of support now on this occasion i had an opportunity to catch about let's see what price is this it's around 34,025. prices came all the way down to 33,990. so that means i left 35 points on the table that's that's like 50 percent more than my regular profit target which is like 21 points 20 points something like that so i could have got a very good profit out of that trade but I was being stubborn and I let the trade come back, not just to be a break even loss, which it should have been. I moved my stop back up once my break even loss was already triggered and prices came all the way back and stopped me out. So that's just a lesson right there about being able to take what the market gives you and don't try and force the issue. There will be days and times to force that issue. And trust me you won't have any doubt about whether you need to force that issue because it'll be clearly obvious based on what the market is presenting to you at that time but today just was not that day and then my last trade of the day let's talk about trade 14. i went long as prices came back to retest the higher low and then i just took profit at resistance so that right there is actually one of my my favorite setups where we're in an uptrend we see prices come back create a higher low I draw a level of support based on the lows of that higher low and then when prices come back into that level i go long and i take it either back up to my profit target or back up to the next major level of resistance above and that's what i was able to do on trade 14 so i did a good job on that one so overall man i would say that i showed some good signs as a trader but i also did a lot of things that kind of detracted and took away from those good things that i was able to do like trades three four and five i would say that taking trade three okay maybe i took that and i was a little bit too early trying to jump the gun okay that's a lesson now if i come back and take the exact same trade and it doesn't work that means that i should just completely stop whatever i'm doing at that junction at that point in time is just not right you know anytime i have two trades in a row that don't work i need to step back and reevaluate so I would say that that third loss was just completely unnecessary if anything i should have shorted from the top rather than shorting from the bottom if i was going to take that same trade again but if i shorted from the top think about it that wouldn't be the same trade that would be a better trade with a better entry so i want to focus more so going forward on doing the things that i do right but also focusing on those little small trades those little small losses because 
those little small losses over and over they eat at my profit from all of my good trades that i had and you know it ends up creating a losing day like i had today and also i would say the biggest biggest lesson i learned today was don't just be 100 percent committed to a major level be 100 percent committed to what the market is telling you and the information that the market is presenting and then be like 80 percent committed to that level that you're aiming for but only an adjustable 80 you can go from 80 to 100 based on what you're seeing in the market so that's the biggest takeaway right here you know and i i've made these mistakes before and that, that's what i really want to focus on because i've had opportunities in other days like this where i could have made good profits if i would have took the trades that was available to me but i'm trying to hold out and be greedy and try and get more rather than taking what's in front of me so i think now that i'm really processing that i think one of the solutions i could take would be to take a trade like trade seven right take my profit when it gets to my profit target no matter what and then if i see that the market is going to continue to move back down to that level that i was uh, initially aiming for i can always get back into the market so you know that's actually my trading style that's how i like to do it i've never really been a, a trader that wants to hold the trade for the entire duration of the move because it just gives me anxiety what works for me is being able to take the trade get my profit and then if it keeps working hey i can just get back in it's no big deal keeps the stress off of me and that's how i like to move and groove when it comes to the market so i think i just need to focus on being me i'm trying to I guess because I've been in drawdown these past couple of weeks, when I finally had an opportunity to see some big profits, I was like, you know what? I can make more. Let me get as much as I can today. But it's not really about making back all of your losses from your past in one day. To get out of a, a losing period of trading like the one I'm in right now, it's more so about taking it day by day and trade by trade. Try and stick to your best setups and the best market conditions that you can possibly find and take one to one to two good trades per day. Lock it in, build up your confidence until you get back to the point where you feel like you can trade bigger size and you can get back to being the trader that you were before you went into the drawdown losing period. So I just need to focus on getting back to what works for me. So tomorrow when I come back for the stream, I want to focus on taking one to two good trades or two losses maximum so actually either two losses or two gains that's it if i hit either one of those i'm done for the day and i think i've done that in the past before and it's allowed me to really focus more so on taking the best trade because when i know that i only have two losses it makes me think a whole lot more about the trades that i want to take and it makes me hold out for the best possible opportunities because I don't want to take those two trades and then have regret like, oh, man, I could have took a better I could have took a better setup. So that's my goal going into tomorrow's session. Tonight, I'll do some back testing and I really want to just focus on being cool, calm and collected when it comes to taking these trades. I have some really good entries, but having a good entry on your trades is not everything when it comes to trading. You need to have three things as a trifecta. So the first thing would be a good entry. Yes. The second thing would be good trade management while that uh while that trade is open. And then the third thing would be a great exit, meaning that you got out at the proper price, either at your profit target or at the level that you was aiming for. But you took profit and made your money, and that's what's the most important. So that's the trifecta right there. Entry management and exit that's gonna be my main focus tonight in my back testing session and i think if i focus on that man i really feel good about coming back tomorrow and just doing the right thing I, I really do so i appreciate you guys for tuning in with me man i hope you guys learned something from this episode because i definitely did i'll be back tomorrow uh on wednesday june 28th 2023 at 9 30 a.m sharp and i'll see you then but until then you guys take it easy.